hello, my name's Tim Coulter. Uh, I'm a developer at Consensus. Um, one of the projects that I've been working on is, uh, as you can see, the Dapp Store. Uh, I'm gonna start this off with a leading question. How many people here have a smartphone? Great, so you, you pretty much know what I'm gonna be presenting on today. Um, so the Dapp Store, uh, what is it? It's uh, very basic. It's a marketplace for distributed applications, just like the uh, Apple App Store, Android App Store. Um, but uh, when you get a little bit more uh, detailed, it's also a registry, so it's a place to find things. Uh, why make the DAP Store? Uh, the general reasons are to promote a DAP economy, so people who are creating DAPs or are creating value for the network. Uh, uh, have a way to uh, get reimbursed for their value, um, uh, a way to distribute apps and uh, pro uh, or DApps, excuse me, and provide publicity for them, and then uh, developer support for various um, features that uh, every developer may not want to write themselves, and I'll get into those in a second. So, uh, some of the features that you might that that the DApp Store have or has. Uh, is all the things, um, the first ones are the basic features, obviously listings of dApps, search, uh, purchases, reviews, um, other features that it comes with or that, uh, that provides value to developers, for instance, is um, onboarding and user acquisition to make that process easy. For instance, a find in the dApp store button or as you might see in the, you know, with, with iOS apps, find in the app store. Um, one, the, the one thing that makes this app store different than uh, the normal app stores that you're used to is that you're not actually downloading anything. So what this is actually providing is instead of a, uh, an economy where you're buying something specific, you're instead uh, buying a license. And so if you get a license for uh, a DAP and they don't have, there's no end date for that license, then it's, it's basically, uh, you're buying a, a free to use, not free to use, a license uh, that you can use to the end of time, or at least till the app's available. Um, but if you add an end date, then that provides uh, or creates a rental economy, uh, which is uh, possibly beneficial to some DAP developers. Um, a feature might be type DAP, or excuse me, tight DAP integration. So w when you have this license economy, uh, your DAP can then check the registry, check the license registry and see does this user have a license for my DAP and if so then you you, um, you either let them use the app or you don't so you can find some access controls across the whole network. Um, some other things that uh, might be in the future is currency tools so it's great if you can buy a DAP in Ether but uh, if you're trying to, to make your DAP attractive to the general public. Maybe you want them to buy in USD. So uh, one possible way that uh, we might provide some value is uh, do, do that conversion or at least make that easy. Um, another one might be company stores. So if you have a company with many DAPs, you want, might want to brand uh, the DAP store or a portion of the DAP store to uh, your store um, and be able to advertise your DAPs that way. Uh, another source of uh, revenue might be uh, uh, ad opportunities. So maybe you want to promote your DAP. If the DAP store becomes a place where anybody or where everybody goes to purchase DAPs, then um, it might be very useful for, to you to, play, for instance, place a, an ad on the front page. Um, there's, we have more ideas. Um, a very short presentation. I have 15 minutes. Uh, so. The DAP store, so, it, so there was uh, what, what is it and why, and so now where and when. Um, I'm happy to announce that the DAP store is live now, uh, that we uh, released it today at DevCon. So you can find it at dappstore.io. Um, thank you. Uh, what you need right now, you're gonna need a, uh, an Ethereum node to check it out. Uh, we're going to be working on that um, to make it easier to access uh, a, a little bit later. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Um, I know I was told, oops, let's full screen that. 
I was told that I wasn't supposed to be running an Ethereum, uh, Go Ethereum node, but right now I am. And so this is actually the live network. Um, we have currently have four apps on it. These are all consensus apps. Uh, for instance, I'm going to go ahead and click into BTC Relay, and you can see that BTC Relay has a description and has some screenshots. Um, what I'm not, what I'm going to do is instead of using the live network to demo this, I will use uh, a local network, and I'm going to. Oops, this went away. I full screened it, excuse me. Um, no, that's wrong. Right, it's a full screen. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this Go Ethereum node and start up uh, EtherSim. Uh, Eri and I have worked uh, pretty hard together to uh, make EtherSim better. So that's, that's uh, I'm really happy about that. And so uh, what I'm going to do. The DApp Store is a Truffle DApp, so I'm going to go ahead and deploy it to EtherSim. So Truffle deploy, and what's going to happen is uh, it's going to deploy the contracts. Oh, you know what? I don't want to compile them. I'm not going to wait for that. Um, no compile. So it's going to deploy the contracts to that EtherSim that I just spun up. It's going to run some uh, post deployment scripts uh, for the development environment. Uh, it runs a uh, script that uh, adds in some demo data. And that's going to finish up here in a second. Let's uh, wait for that. And if you notice, EtherSim is processing all the calls and transactions. Uh, so, great. Now we're just going to do, we're going to serve that on localhost. Check it out over here. Perfect. And then we have. If it loads up, our DAP store on EtherSim. So, uh, what I have is I have uh, four, or excuse me, um, set seven of the eight DAPs that are live right now. I'm going to go ahead and add one uh, for this demo. So, uh, go ahead. And, this right here is will soon be persona integration, and uh, right now, so right now it's just uh, an anonymous user. But uh, add a new DAP, you get. Um, information about the DAP. So what I'm going to, the DAP I am going to add right now is called DAO Wars. It's a uh, distributed, Peter, how do, we, how do you say that? Distributed smart contract program game. Um, so DAO Wars, right, we're going to give it a unique ID, which is not really used right now, but we hope for that to be used. Uh, I have the logo over here, which is a pretty sweet logo. Um, we're just going to go ahead and put that in. Smart contract programming game. And uh, the, DA or the DAO Wars currently lives um, at a GitHub repository. Now, it's not a DAP that you can use yet, but at least it could benefit from the publicity of the DAP store at least being in it. So I'm going to go ahead and take the description from the GitHub repository. Go ahead and uh, hit next. Submitting a transaction. Now we got to talk. Now we got to uh, add a version that uh, people can start using. So this version is going to be 0 0.2.0. Again, the place that uh, you can find at Downwards right now is at this location. Uh, there's nothing. I'm not going to write anything new about this version. That's optional. Um, but I'm going to add a couple screenshots, uh, or actually one screenshot, and I have it right here. So right now, as you'll see, screenshots are hosted elsewhere. Eventually, we hope for them to be hosted uh, on IPFS. Um, Go ahead and finish up with that, and and what you'll see is you have your page for the DAP store, and you can begin uh, perhaps selling your DAP. So uh, one more thing, uh, that this this user is right um, is a developer, I suppose, is registered as a developer in the system, but obviously this user could purchase DAP. So I'm going to get it free, purchasing it for zero dollars, of course, and. Uh, you can open it up. It brings you to exactly where you want to go. If I wanted to go see which purchases I've made, I can go click over here, and you'll notice that DAO Wars shows up. So uh, that's where we're at now. We have, uh, uh, oh, five minutes. Great. We have a lot of things we want to do, but um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use those five minutes for any questions. Yeah. Sorry, I guess I didn't alert you about that. Thanks. Next question. Questions? OK. So how, how do you, is it on? How do you open uh, 
So you're linking just to the app. How you, when it's in another context, uh, context of another domain, how you uh, make sure that it's like openable. So how, wh like you're running the normal browser. Yeah, yeah. So, so the app itself has to check a specific contract to check if this current user is allowed to use it. Yeah, so uh, the way that it would work uh, is your DAP would integrate or know where the, the license registry is, and you would, you would have your own key or um, uh, address for your, your DAP, and then you'd go look at the registry and say, does this user, does this address have a license for my DAP? And if so, uh, is the license valid? And then you would uh, Res either restrict, if, if it is valid, you would let them use the, the DAP, and if not, you would restrict them from access. So, so you would use Web3 ETH accounts to check what identity the user has? Uh, yeah, right now we're using um, addresses. Yeah, this is all, this is all Web3. Um, it should run in MIST, although I probably need to do uh, one or two tweaks to the code. Um, but, uh, but that's the idea. Uh, it, it's, uh, yeah, well, I guess I was going to say it should run in MIST, yeah. Okay, we've got time for one more question. So, um, when you meant you're, you're going to purchase the app, yeah. why, why, why is the purchase coming via, via your app, and why, not, why won't the app simply use you as a catalog, and then you are... Because what, what the app gets from the app store is just exposure. Because the whole micropayment and, and selling something to the user in the end can be perfectly done via Ethereum, doesn't need to go through the App Store. So what's the purpose of, of having the purchase concept? Um, well, some of the features that uh, might be interesting to provide is, uh, well, let me just make sure I understand your question. Why, why am I purchasing the app via the Depth Store? Why am I not just using the Depth Store as a catalog to see something and then inside the app, completely separated from your Depth Store, uh, the, the transaction of purchasing is just between the Depth and the Depth user? Yeah, well, let me, let me um, put it this way. What if you wanted to uh, make your Depth available to people who want to use different currencies, who don't, who don't want to use say, uh, Ethereum, or, or want to use your app but don't know too much about the, uh, uh, about Ethereum, but uh, to be exposed to it. Like they don't want to run a node, or maybe they don't want to run a, run a wallet, but you want to expose them via the browser. Um, one thing that the DAPster could do is, is provide that conversion for you. Now, if you're just asking where this button should be, that's, uh, if you're just saying that oh, maybe I can have a DAP store button that says buy it on my own website, well, that's, a feature, that's definitely a feature we can provide and that can integrate directly to the store. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, so it, it was intended um, like MIST, uh, like the DAP store that we all have discussed in the past as a catalog first. Um, where people can select, bookmark decentralized apps that they're interested in, and uh, certainly not pay for those. Um, but there may be some business models in which people would want to pay, or developers would want to be paid up front, or would want to lease their apps, or something like that. So Tim made that uh, a use case as well. So it's a, it's a way to organize your, your apps as well. Uh, that's a good point. If you if you put an app in the, or a DAP in the DAP store today, uh, you cannot sell it. It's uh, released currently free. So uh, those features will be added later. Uh, looks like my time's up. Uh, thank you.